Hey Walters 9.4, how did you land your first Salesforce job? Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters 954 here. In this video, I'm going to tell you how I landed my first Salesforce developer job and give you some key tips on getting your first job in the Salesforce ecosystem. Make sure to stick around to the end where I'll go over my probably most important tip on how to land your first job in the Salesforce ecosystem. As many of you have seen, I've had a couple different Salesforce jobs, um, some as developers, junior devs, um, some as the lead consultant or senior consultant at various different companies at, and at different sizes, startups versus established companies. And, you know, depending on when you're watching this, I could be way further than that. My first real Salesforce job was an entry level developer position. I made about 50K down here in South Florida. This was straight out of college. So it was actually pretty decent money going from what I had originally been making, which was maybe $12 an hour. That job was amazing. I met a lot of new people, learned a ton about working in a corporate setting, getting along with different teams and delivering big projects. The main thing that helped me land that job was actually an internship at Ryder Systems. So Ryder, many of you know it as the trucking company and opening for, I think it was like a data analyst or some type of data position. I knew nothing at the time about Salesforce at all. And I, you know, somehow got the job and that's where I learned Salesforce. So it was a really great experience getting this internship. This was my first exposure to Salesforce. I learned about, you know, huge organizations. They had maybe 300 plus people. I learned how to work day to day with different teams, send emails, communication, deliver projects. And that was over the course of a year. At the beginning of the internship, it was a lot of administration type things. So process builders, workflows, updating accounts even, and doing some data cleanup. And eventually we had a roadblock to where we needed some code to be written. I took it upon myself since I was going to school for IT to take the first stab at it and write that trigger. I had some really amazing managers and mentors at Rider, which gave me the go ahead to go down the path of writing code and creating my first trigger. And the rest is just history from there. I continued to write code for the Rider org, um, and built my administration skills. I was still going to school at the time, so it was a good balance between uh, school work and then actual work and Salesforce work at the same time. But that internship really springboarded my career. You know, I went from actually making a little bit of money at the internship, I think it was maybe $11, $12, to getting my first job after graduating, which I said earlier was 50K. So uh, that's a really big jump and really great for somebody that's just starting out out in their Salesforce career. Oh, I see. You were some computer science mathematics wizard, probably top of your class. So I actually wasn't the next Einstein when I was going to school. I was a very average student and I applied to maybe 50 or 100 different places when I was looking for my first internship and I just so happened to land on Writer. And I'm telling you this just to kind of break down the barrier. You don't need to be some type of mathematics wizard or super genius to get a job in the Salesforce ecosystem. Anybody could have gotten that role and you know it could have been you. All you have to do is put yourself out there, definitely try and look for some of these different jobs, get the experience that you can. So through Trailhead or the personal projects, volunteering, however you can do it. This way you'll continue to build your skills, get your foot in the door. And then once you get past that beginning hump, you'll get messages every day from recruiters asking you to uh, switch jobs and look at this different offer that they have. But there's no internships in my area. I can't afford to take a pay cut. How do I get experience? That's the really hard one. Getting experience is that vicious cycle of, well, they're asking for experience for you to start the job and you need experience to actually get the job and get your foot in the door. So it's very hard to balance those two, but I will tell you that there is hope you know, internships are a really good place to start looking, but there are other things you can do to build your experience up and actually, you know, get your foot in the door. You all know that I'm preaching it all the time. Get on Trailhead. Trailhead wasn't as big when I was first getting started. It's a free resource. You're learning Salesforce. You're getting experience. Continue to do Trailhead and keep up with all the new badges. And that stuff really starts to add up as you move through and get more experience. Do personal projects, things that excite you. You know, Salesforce your life is what I call it. So if you're trying to search for a new job, make that inside of Salesforce. 
do certain projects that will give you that experience. Maybe it's not directly business related, but personal projects are a really good way to get your feet wet, getting you exposed to the system, understanding how to use different aspects of it, and it's applicable to your life. So you're actually having more fun, I'll say, or it's more interesting to you to complete them. If you can't afford it, you know, for me, I would say go to school for some type of information systems or computer science. People are really looking for those types of degrees for different Salesforce roles. Another really great way to get experience is by volunteering. So spend some extra time, look at some nonprofits that interest you and see if they have Salesforce. And there is salesforce.org, which is centered around volunteering and it makes it really easy to find nonprofits to volunteer your time for. Check out this video with my friend Sarah Epting who has started her own nonprofit consulting company and there may be some tips in there for you to get started and get some experience with Salesforce. Go to your local community events. There's a lot of really great people there and you may just strike up a conversation with somebody who is looking for either an entry level Salesforce admin developer or somebody with your specific skill set who they can teach Salesforce so that really helps out. Those are some things that you can do you know, maybe on the side after work or just as some extracurricular activities. Uh, some things that can actually get you paid is just doing some freelance work. You may not be able to charge 65, 75, 100, 200 dollars an hour because you don't have the experience, but that's what you're trying to build up at this point. So go ahead and try out some freelance jobs. There are websites like Upwork where you can bid for different Salesforce projects. You know, be honest with them that you're learning and you may get lucky and get a couple freelance gigs. You might be taking a pay cut, but junior roles are a good place to start, especially when you're getting your foot in the door in the Salesforce ecosystem. So go ahead and look for some junior roles if you have any in your area, apply at the different companies, and I can tell you it will pay off in the years to come. So, you know, moving from $12 an hour to 50K, which is maybe, I don't know, 24. And now I've, I've literally, you know, let's say double, tripled my salary by this time. So spend a little bit up front now work with your whoever you're responsible for. So maybe that's your partner or your kids or whatever to if you can work out a system to where you can maybe take a pay cut for a year or two and then you'll be in a really good situation. There's also part time work. So this goes more out to maybe the devs or even I've seen some admins do this, but um, some companies they can't really afford to have a full time admin or developer on staff. So uh, maybe if you can do like 20 hours a week at certain places, you know, it's going to be a little bit to work on in the beginning. But once you build that relationship, you can definitely start getting experience and then hopefully rolling on to either a full time position or going to you know a different uh, company where you can leverage your part time experience to you know, actually do Salesforce administration and development. So I'm gonna break down the barrier for internships right now. Internships are not only for you know kids right out of college. I've known people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s to do internships. Um, one of the key areas I would say to look for is in consulting firms. So consulting firms wanna bring people in for cheap, teach them, and send them out in the workforce so that you know they can charge X amount of dollars, whatever they're charging, but in the end of the day, your trade-off is that you're getting experience. Um, they'll wanna get you certified and all these other things they'll teach you about consulting, which is a really good skill to have. I would say look into the different consulting firms when you're trying to get into Salesforce, get your foot in the door. There are some big pros and cons to doing an internship there or even working at a consulting firm in general, but it can really pay off if you put in the work and put in the effort at some of these consulting firms and just internships in general. Check your local companies if they have Salesforce and send some messages out and see what you land. So some other key areas that worked out for me was LinkedIn. So get connected to other people in your area, people who are in the Salesforce ecosystem. They may be higher up, just talk to them, see what their path was. You know, mine is not the end all be all. Everyone's not gonna get an internship. So there are other avenues that people have taken either getting a job first at some company that had Salesforce. Maybe you're looking for like a data analyst role or a data entry role and working your way into the Salesforce ecosystem um, as they have the job there. So there's a bunch of different stories and people are super friendly and nice. And then like I just pointed out, make sure to look for other jobs that may not be directly related to Salesforce. So data analyst, data entry, even some assistants or office managers have to deal with this type 
type of stuff. But there are other roles that you may not directly uh, be labeled as the Salesforce developer or administrator, but you will touch Salesforce in a day to day and that does count as experience. So if you're kind of seeing a trend here, experience is king when it comes to pretty much any job and getting into any role. You'll need to figure out a way to build yourself up on the experience department. So that's either through internships or personal projects or doing trailhead. A lot of times nowadays, a piece of paper and a diploma is not good enough. I've hired many people who do not have a four year degree or have gone to a university or done any types of boot camps. At the end of the day, it matters that you can do the job that you say you can do, or you can learn it as you go along. And that's a big one. A lot of things when you're first starting out, you do have to make some sacrifices for it. So maybe you'll have to cut your salary in half to get a junior role. But at the end of the day, you know, you're starting to see some of the salaries that people are making in the Salesforce ecosystem. And that could be you in a year, two years time, you know, making $100,000 in Salesforce. My final tip to getting your first job is soft skills. So this is interviewing, talking to people, making sure that you're able to communicate what's inside your head to the interviewer. So that's something that I've worked over the years really hard on and have gotten better at. If you have the experience and it seems like you're struggling at interviews, I would say work on your soft skills, do practice interviews, um, definitely reach out to me. I will conduct practice interviews with many people just to give them another set of ears and eyes and tell them what they did good on. Soft skills are key to breaking down that initial barrier and getting your foot in the door. So thank you all so much for watching. If this video helped even one person, you know, that's the reason that I started this channel. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Leave a comment down below on additional tips that you've used or tell us your story on how you got started in Salesforce. I'm Walters954 and remember, I believe in you.